the littlest people, the most in insignificant people, and he does amazing things with all of them. Many of you, as you guys went on the church website to register, you saw a quote by St. John Chrysostom, or Morivani, we hear in the fifth of them. And it's something he wrote and said was, in children, we have a class one. In children, we have a great charge committed to us. Let us bestow great care upon them and do everything that the evil one, so that the evil one may not rob them from us. In a lot of ways, we see that the, our kids in, in today's world deal with a lot of scary things. Even compared to my own childhood, the world out there has become a lot more dangerous with constant access to technology. We hear things about cyberbullying and all these horrible things that children are exposed to from very, such a young age. And so, St. John Chrysostom reminds us that it's our duty, it's our responsibility to train our children in such a way so that the evil one, or Satan, or the world don't, does not take them away from us. And while we know that none of us are perfect, and while um, we'll, everyone will have their ups and downs, by rooting our children in the church, and ultimately by rooting them in Jesus Christ, we're able to hopefully ensure that the life they lead is one that one day they themselves can raise their own children in such a way that the evil one does not rob them of us. And so this place in many ways for three days, including today, finishing with Holy Kurbana, is a place of fellowship, but it was also a safe haven for our children to be away from the world and to be surrounded by people who love Jesus just as much as they do. And like I said earlier, our theme this year in many ways was bold and strengthen God. The ability of God to take the most littlest thing and make something amazing out of it. God is our source of strength. St. Paul talks about in many of his epistles and how in, in our weakness, God manifests his strength. And that's ultimately shown right in the most, the most weak point in the history of humanity was the crucifixion of our Lord. The creator of the universe hung up on a cross to die, yet in that moment, the most powerful thing happened. He defeated death. And so we see that God is able to take the most vulnerable, the most horrible, and the most, what we consider weak of situations, and do immense powerful things with them. And so, I guess I'll ask the kids some questions. What were some of the lessons we learned this weekend? Can someone name one of the lessons? David and Goliath. Okay, so David was, everyone knows, right? He was a small man fighting a large giant, right? And he, God was able to not only use him to defeat Goliath, but would make him the king of Israel. And not only the king of Israel, the greatest king of Israel. All right, what was another story that one of you learned? Fiery furnace. I heard fiery furnace. We know about the story of the three youths. Three young men who were in the, thrown into the furnace because they refused to worship King Nebuchadnezzar. They refused to worship his statue. And he was thrown, they were thrown into, this, into the furnace as young men. And we know the story, right? There was a fourth man in there, and it looked like the angel of God, and the men were unharmed by the fire. And in fact, Nebuchadnezzar began to confess their God. What was another story? Deborah, have any of you, have you guys heard of Deborah before? All right, great. We have learned about Deborah, who's kind of an un, a smaller character in the Bible, or in many ways maybe a great character in the Bible. One of the great judges, we know that Israel after the times of the kings, or before the time of the kings had judges, after Moses and Joshua. And Deborah was one of the few female leaders of the nation of Israel. So we taught our children, especially our young girls, that being a woman, being a girl, doesn't mean you're any less. But in fact, God uses you in the greatest way. Especially during this time where we remember the mother of God. We are remembering that women are just as important as men. And that they are used for God's kingdom in a very important way. Alright, what other story did we learn? Go ahead, Hope. Saul? 
All right, yeah. Saul going to Damascus, or the Apostle Paul, being converted on the way to Damascus, and how he was brought to his knees in front of God, and was in many ways humbled, in a, such a strong man was humbled, because God wanted him to see that his strength didn't come from his knowledge, but from the Holy Spirit. And one more lesson that we all learn. We shout it out. And Jesus healing the blind man, right? The blind man who many wondered why such a man would be born blind. And Christ shows us that it's because through, through his weakness and through all the miracles that Christ did, especially the healing miracles, through those people's weaknesses, God showed how strong he really was. And another thing that our children really learned is the idea of repentance. Today's gospel, as Hutchin said, is the first Sunday after Transfiguration, talks about you know, Christ says, even the harlots will get into the kingdom of heaven before you. And the reason is because they're willing to repent. Christ is able to take all of us, all of us as sinners, as people who have betrayed Christ. He's willing to take us back at any moment, on every, any day. And sometimes our children, especially with the pressures that we as parents, as brothers and sisters can put on our kids, as well as the pressures that they get from school and church and everything else, sometimes they feel like they're not good enough. Sometimes they feel like they can never be good again. But their value doesn't come from the world. Their value comes from the fact that they, were, they have been baptized to the church and they have the seal of Jesus Christ on every single one of them. One thing that class four that I just wanted to bring up was we talked about loving our neighbor when it's really, even when it was really hard. And we talked about the story of Paul and Ananias. In the story of Saul's conversion, many of us don't really pay attention to Ananias. But Ananias was the one that God chose to go and baptize Paul. And think about the amount of people Paul baptized. And the amount of people, thousands of people, millions of people, and even today, are touched by Paul's letters in the Bible. Yet God chose Ananias, who St. John Chrysostom writes as someone almost as a nobody. He had no great significant role. He was not anybody important. But yet Christ chose him to be the one who baptized Paul. And he calls Paul brother in Acts 9. He calls him brother Saul. Which is very interesting because Ananias knows that Saul is someone who had been killing the Christians. Yet he calls him brother. And so I know in class 4 and the other class that we talked about, are we able to love our brothers and sisters even when they hate us? Do we love them? Do we love every single person just as much as we love our family and our close friends? And in class four, we talked about the Coptic martyrs. As many of you know, in the last year, many people have been killed by ISIS, and specifically the martyrs of the Coptic church. About many men who were, who were asked to convert to Islam, but all of them said no and were killed for their, killed for their faith and were martyrs for the faith. And yet, and many of them loved the people who were taking knives to their neck. And we talked about that in class four, especially, about how can we love our neighbor, especially when they hate us. And then we did all the other fun things that we always do at VBS. We learned some songs, we played some really fun games, some new games this year, such as Spud, uh, and we ate some really good food. Um, and the kids really liked the food, I think especially the chili dogs was a hit with a lot of people. So. Those of you who didn't come yesterday, you missed out on some good chili dogs. We also learned some things about, we learned about the church more. One of the things we spent a little bit of time yesterday was before noon prayer, I asked the students, who is noon prayer dedicated to? So guys, who is noon prayer dedicated to? Shout it out. Mary. Mary. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know that we had a sixth hour of prayer dedicated to the mother of God? And we talked a little bit about what is the role of Mary in the church. As I just said, we are in the time of Shunoya, as the church calls, the dormition or the falling asleep of the mother of God. And we told the children about how important it is. To read. There's a reason that Mary is in almost all our prayers. It's because she's the perfect model of Christians for us. The perfect model of what it means to fully and truly love Christ more than anybody else. And as the church teaches us, and only a mother could, as only a mother could, Mary loved Jesus with her whole being. And she's the only person who's been able to do that successfully. Truly loved God with every fiber of herself. 
And for that, the church obviously venerates her and honors her. And just like and I told, we, the children learned about how the reason we ask Mary for things, the reason we ask Mary to pray for us is because we even see in the Bible that Mary, in the, at the wedding at Cana, the first Sunday of Lent, when, Christ, when Mary tells Jesus to do something about the wine that's run out, Jesus listens to her. And so Jesus, in many, the church teaches us as a result and because of her close relationship with Jesus, we're able to ask Mary to pray for us. And the children are able, therefore, now sixth hour and noon hour, noon prayer, even though it's only a short 10 minute prayer, it has much more meaning to our children now. And above all, we learn to love each other and love God more. We learn more about what it means to be a church, what it means to love each other like Christ loved us. None of us are perfect, and that includes our children, even though sometimes we think our children are pretty perfect. But the heart that God has put in all of us, and especially all of our young children, and the gift of the Holy Spirit that is in all of them, was obvious the entire weekend. The entire weekend, this place was overflowing with love, laughter, and excitement. They loved being here, and they treated the church, and they treated each other with dignity and love that only Jesus Christ can put in our hearts.